Since the fall of man, a war has raged between good and evil. Over the centuries, this war has distorted the truth. Now the truth is perceived as lies, and lies acknowledged as truth. To this day, the battle continues as we investigate and debate the truth behind the history and mystery of the universe. We are Paratruth Radio. Dogmen, wolfmen, creatures of the full moon. Some say that cryptids are imaginary. Others say that they exist in the shadows. But none compare to the most dangerous cryptid of them all. This is the story of the most famous werewolf in America. Now Paratruth presents The Beast of Bray Road. What's going on, ladies and gents? My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And you are listening to Paratruth Radio right here on the Paratruth Radio Network. Who let the dogs out? So uh, today we are uh, just chatting it up, just Eric and I, for the uh, topic we have today. But first, how has the week been for you, sir? week's been pretty good. We're working on a lot of... Uh, stuff for school it's getting crazy trying to figure out and make plans for uh, work oh. summer Ugh, <laughs> such a pain yeah. there's so much that i have to do in order but this is the thing like with filmmaking um you don't really get into a production company or get real work unless you have a reel or a demo reel right um which i currently don't have but i'm in the process of trying to make one i'm just waiting for people to give me footage of mine oh and it's hard to get that footage sometimes yeah. Uh, just because we're all so busy. But the thing is, in the film industry, if if you don't have a reel, you might think, oh, well, I don't have a reel, but I have links to films that I've done. I'll just send them the links and good. Yeah. Well, no, that's unprofessional. And they will not bother calling you back, emailing you back, anything. It's just it's the moment you send those links, forget it. You're not getting the job. So I need to get the reel done within the next two weeks here, so I could start applying for different positions or even the freelance stuff, but. Is that, that's your goal then for the summer is to try and get into cinematography or? It's gonna be a while before I actually get into becoming a director of photography. It's gonna be a process. So right now for the summer, I'm probably gonna look into just a uh, paid internship because I'm staying here in Virginia for the summer. Oh, okay. Because I have to be here during the fall uh, and just make money have something on my resume uh, and continue learning the process and getting a chance to get behind the camera. And then eventually, probably within the next year or so, end up moving out to who don't know where anymore. Like originally it was going to be Vancouver. Now I'm starting the question really if I want to go to Vancouver. Yeah. Um, I could move, I might move down to Atlanta. That's a big possibility. Uh, and then New York is another option. I don't, I still really don't want to go to LA, but <laughs> we'll see. Well, it I, it just I guess depends on what happens, you know, after school is done too. I mean, yeah. if you can get the uh, internship, that'll get you, you know, get that under your belt so that you have a better chance of getting hired on. So yeah, I mean, it would be great if Cleveland can get something together and get Hollywood back up there. Yeah. Like right now, Cleveland is struggling to get. Uh, the big Hollywood films up there's still, still filming movies over there but they're not Hollywood uh, multi-million dollar projects you know um, but they're having trouble doing that because of finances and so the uh, film committee up there in Cleveland needs to raise about one billion dollars in order to allow those companies or at least move the companies to decide to come back to Cleveland and work. So if that happens, the last then I'll just go back there home. was the Avengers, correct? The, the last financial, financially wise uh, film was uh, the Winter Soldier. Oh, so I didn't realize they, they did the Winter Soldier there. Yeah, they did the Winter Soldier there. So I'm trying to think they might... 
I can't remember if they did uh, the second Avengers film or not. I think they did might have did parts of it there. Not everything. It wasn't as big as the first one in Cleveland. Oh. But I think they did a little bit there as well. Everything else has been independent independent films, so they didn't have huge name, huge huge productions companies behind right. them. Then they've had big characters or big actors, but they haven't had big companies, which is really the ideal thing that we need is companies up there. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, uh, our topic isn't cinematography today, guys. <laughs> just, a, just a little uh, rabbit trail there. Um, and the other big thing for you too to to get you into the role is the revealed, and it's it's getting closer and closer every time we talk to each other. It's it's getting close. You know, I'm working. I'm behind. Honestly, I'm a little behind on it. Um, I am working on dialogue editing and audio right now. Oh. So I'm trying to get that and the ADR stuff all set up. Once I got the dialogue edit done, that's done. And so audio-wise, we're good. Then it's all visual, which is pretty much the last step that I have to do. It's going to be adding the special effects. So, you know, shadows and certain things that are happening in the film. Mm -hmm. I think there's only four special effects that, that I'm doing in the film. So not that many for a film that's 10 minutes and nine seconds long, uh, but there's significant spots. You know, these are areas where it's going to be really help. And then the final thing is color correction. And the color correction is pretty much just kind of the, the cherry on top, if you will. It's going to help me to bring the tone into perspective uh, and help move the audience to the feeling that I want them to have right. in regards to the picture. So, but yeah, it's what is it? It's almost March, right? Yep. <sighs> man, <laughs> it's, I'm telling you, man, it's coming it's fast. Almost, it's three months, not even. Yeah. It's almost. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, tonight, <laughs> folks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's just do the radio show. <laughs> Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the Beast of Ray- Bray Road or the Bray Road Beast. Interchangeable names there just because it's basically the same thing. Uh, so uh, the, the Bray Road Beast <laughs> is uh, it's a couple of different things because, in my opinion, uh, they're saying cryptid, but then they say werewolf. In my opinion, I think the werewolf is not necessarily a cryptid per se. Uh, Interesting. But uh, they say it's a cryptid. It's in Wisconsin. Um, it says Walworth County is is where it's originating at um, Elkhorn, Wisconsin. Um, and it, I'm, I've seen different things, but I've the main consensus was there were several sightings uh, dating all the way back to 1936, but there was a, a spurt kind of in different years uh, 36, 64, 72 and then not again until 1989 and then hmm. it goes from 89 to 91 and then a little bit in 92 and then nothing like it's never, it hasn't been heard of since then as far as I've seen, what about you? It's really weird, no I, that's pretty much where I saw it kind of fell off of the board as well uh, which is very interesting because there's a lot of speculation that the entire thing was made up the entire story of the Bray Red Beast Uh, there's been evidence um, in a documentary that I had watched once there had been evidence supporting the idea that the people who happened to run into the Bray Road Beast Mm -hmm. all knew each other they were either friends or family in some way or another Um, which is also kind of makes things a little sketchy you know it kind of like well it's one it's one thing if nobody knows each other and they all have the same story but here they all know each other and it's the same story right. does that mean one person saw it and then everybody else thought they saw it or did they just all one day wake up and say hey let's <laughs> do something fun right. and you know so what you and i have actually contemplated but <laughs> yes yes we have <laughs> But yeah, that's what I I I saw, too, was that they're all connected somehow, the witnesses. Yeah, so in that regards, you know, that's an interesting interesting thing to come by. But uh, after 91 and 92 area, you know, I haven't seen much of anything. Even to this day, like, there's been 
were of sightings around the world. In fact, there's one that recently came out. Uh, uh, where was it? I want to say Germany, but I might be completely wrong on that. It was Brazil because I actually had it oh, in my way wrong on that. <laughs> in my paranormal headlines, it was well, it was somewhere South America. I'm pretty sure it said Brazil. Uh, uh, people, I don't know if you know this, but that's on two separate sides of the world: <laughs> Brazil, Germany. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, and it could be that one a, a video came out from Germany as well, but the one that I had reported on, I saw from from Brazil. Yeah. Well, and so let's let's go about this two different ways as far as for right now. It, they're saying okay. it's a werewolf, but they're saying it's a cryptid. So there's there's two things to a, a werewolf. If you think of the traditional werewolf, it's a man becoming a beast. If you think of a cryptid, it's a creature that is an animal, and it was never a man. So if it's a werewolf, possibly dark magic, demonic, uh, not necessarily possession, but uh, demonic influence or praying to Satan, whatever, for, for your body to change, or shamanic uh, magic, which is Native American, uh, all of which are supposedly the, the ways that uh, this is happening to people for, for becoming werewolves. Um, where a cryptid is constantly an animal. It was never a man, and it's just walking around. Um, what are your thoughts on either of those two pieces uh, I think they I, mean, I think in a sense they can be used interchangeably um, now where means man wolf basically yeah but that doesn't necessarily mean that a man has to turn into a wolf to become a werewolf uh, I figure or liken a were no pun intended by the way <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't plan that, guys. I swear. I saw it, uh, or I heard it, and I was just going to let it go. But you, uh, you got I, it then, I, then I caught it. I was like, wait, wait a second. I should have redirected. <laughs> we talked about this earlier. <laughs> <laughs> they did. Darn it. <laughs> so, so about the tribe. What, what tribe? Uh, anyway, so I liken the word werewolf to man beast, but it could be like a beast that walks like a man or in some way acts like right. a man. If it is a creature of some sort that has a certain intelligence to it and the ability to do something that normal dogs and wolves can't, you know, they walk on all fours. Mm. Perhaps a werewolf is somehow designed to walk on two legs. It's We see a much larger creature, usually stands around seven feet tall or so, weighs around 300 pounds approximately. So they're not super heavy, but I mean, a seven feet, 300 pounds, giant claws and teeth, you're not going to survive that in a hand-to-hand you know, fist yeah. fight. But um, I think the word werewolf doesn't necessarily, like I just said, doesn't have to mean a man turning into a beast. It could just mean a beast that is like a man, in a sense. Mm-hmm. And that's just that's just in stature. You know, the way it stands, the way it walks, things like that. In regards to a cryptid, we're still looking at the same thing. If the werewolf is, as I say, where it's just a you know, a creature that happens to have man-like, you know, appearance or whatever, or abilities, but yet was always an animal. Well, now we're on two equal playing fields because it's still technically a cryptid. It was never, ever a man. It just happens to, you know, look at the bear, you know, brown bear, black bear. They stand on two legs to look around. You know, yeah. I mean, gorillas, they sometimes do the same thing. There are animals out there that can walk on two legs or stand on two legs and so on and so forth. It doesn't mean that they get dominance, too. Yeah, and it doesn't mean they're human by any means, but there are human characteristics. You can look at uh, pets that we have, you know, dogs, cats, so on and so forth. Sometimes you look at them and think, well, that's almost weirdly human-like that they're responding the way that they're responding. But obviously, they're still an animal, and they still have very many animal characteristics that are very far from human. But there's just little things that happen. Yeah. So I I think – I don't know if I'm making a strong point here or not, but I think they can still be used interchangeably. I don't think werewolf and cryptid are two separate or should be two separate things. 
I think it's different. Is the, the difference is going to be? I guess you have to just define werewolf. You know, what do you mean by werewolf? Right. Well, that's what I mean too. Like it, it's it can be used interchangeably, but if you think of the werewolf that we're told about from lore and legend, it mm-hmm. was a man that becomes a beast. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that that is truly what happened when people were making up this lore because maybe they did see a dog man and thought oh my god it's a person that became a dog like creature and that's why Mm -hmm. they came up with that lore but uh when you when you think of that lore compared to what a cryptid technically is it it doesn't come to my mind that it's it's the same thing but i i agree with you that they could be interchangeably used when it comes to describing a werewolf. It could mm-hmm. be just a man or man like looking creature because it can stand on two legs, because it can use hands like this and not just paws right. and that sort of thing, yeah. Um what about uh the one description well I think in every description that it it says that uh, the back legs are almost seem weaker than the front legs mm-hmm. and it's it could possibly be uh more like a hyena than a than a wolf um what do you think that that would what would cause that if if it's like a wolf what's interesting about th- this whole perception that werewolves may have weaker back ends compared to the front end and how they're almost uh, similar to the look of hyenas is actually very interesting because there is there, well there's a documentary that I watched several years ago more than several years ago it's almost been eight years now I think just about maybe a little a little less um, about the beast of Gévaudan France okay uh, and it's probably one of the most popular werewolf stories and really where the werewolf originated I think truly and basically there is a werewolf attack uh, and these attacks happened between 1764 and 1767 and in 1987 there was a study which estimated about 210 attacks total resulting in 113 deaths and 49 injuries 98 of the victims of which were partly eaten uh, now, there's other claims, though, that say there were really only about 60 to 100 adults and children that were attacked mm-hmm. and uh, killed, 30 of which were only injured. But the thing is that this werewolf was – it was literally eating people. Uh, it was taking heads off. Okay. It was ripping limb from limb. So it was obvi- very obviously an extremely powerful animal. Now, back then – Especially in France, you were you were able to get wild animals, especially exotic ones. And there was a man uh, by the name of uh, I think it's Francis and and Antone. I think. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, if but Francis French is probably Antone. Is there an E? Okay. At the so end? F- yes. Yes. Yeah. So Francis Antone. Uh, now Francis. It was somebody who was kicked out of the church at one point, and he, he was just considered a guy that he let's just say he wasn't a good guy. You know, people didn't really see him as one of them. Mm-hmm. So he was kicked out of the church. Suddenly, these werewolf attacks start happening, and he made it his life's work, basically, which it didn't take his whole life. But it was like the thing that's going to bring him to the top to kill this werewolf. And so he fashioned up some silver bullets, and he went out, found the werewolf, and shot it, killed it. And then they displayed it at the court of Louis uh, the the 15th, Louis the 15th. Okay. Now, what's interesting is that during this documentary that I watched, and forgive me, I'll let you know later, I don't remember the name of the documentary, but as soon as I do, I'll let you know. Though. But it was a documentary called the real Wolf, the real Wolfman. Oh, okay, got it. So a documentary. It was on the History Channel back in October of two thousand and nine. Very interesting. Uh, that was actually right around the time that our show really started yeah. going. Coincidence? Um, Maybe not. I think not. <laughs> um, 
they did some research and it was really interesting. It was a cryptozoologist and a detect- detective. The detective went through all of the evidence regards to the attacks and what they were. Uh, he also specializes in guns, obviously. So he took the gun that Francis would have used, put a silver bullet in it. At the same kind, he would see how accurate the bullet was, it was extremely hard and wouldn't match the uh, the what's the word I'm looking for the uh, grooves and oh. and the gun to make the bullet spin. And the biologist did his best to try to put the pieces together and find out any evidence or history or anything that would kind of link this werewolf attack. Well, as it turns out, Francis, because he was upset for being kicked out of the church, decided to create the werewolf. And he did this by getting an got a creature known as the hyena. Hyenas, believe it or not, are extremely trainable, even more so than dogs. Um, and so he trained the hyena and then had it kill all of these people, 60 to 100 people the hyena killed. Jeez. And then he shot the hyena a point blank in the chest with a silver bullet in the heart and it died he then brought it back to King, uh, to uh, Louis the 15th and displayed it and said look here is your werewolf I killed it and what happened the church came back in and he became the, his- the hero of the entire city um, now this is like again th- this is a big difference 1700s compared to the 2000s right. there's a lot of stuff in between that could have happened was this creature literally a hyena that had that had uh killed these people we don't know for sure but based on the smithsonian and what they told us this creature the hyena was the exact same creature that was displayed on the court of louis the 15th that right after these werewolf attacks and that this creature was indeed the werewolf of the city so it almost seems to me like if this is indeed the very first true account of a werewolf attack it would make sense why current day werewolves seem to have a weaker back end or weaker rear uh, rear legs Mm -hmm. because it's based off of a hyena which also has weaker back legs and a much stronger upper torso and the reason they had the stronger upper torso is because they can use it to grab and pull and stuff like that um as opposed to like tigers and lions, which are equally balanced and tend to lunge at their prey. Right. So, yeah. It, well, and I actually, you've done more research as far as the werewolf than I have because I have I've never heard that before. So, um, all right, folks. I think this is a uh, a good point to take our first break here. You're listening to Paratruth Radio right here on the Paratruth Radio Network. Uh, we will continue this conversation about the Beast of Bray Road, but first, Eric's random fact of the day. <laughs> According to ChicagoTribune.com, the Postal Service has a global forever stamp, allowing mailers to send a letter anywhere in the world for $1.10. But have you ever wondered how much it would cost to send a letter to space, or in particular, to Mars? Well, according to NASA, the price that it would cost to send a letter to Mars is 18,000 US dollars. This was Eric's random back to the day. All right, folks, welcome back to Paratruth Radio right here on the Paratruth Radio Network. My name is Justin and I'm Eric. And we've been talking about the Bray Road Beast or the Beast of Bray Road. And uh, what we were talking about just before break here was the the instance in in France where they discovered that uh, the supposed werewolf that was had uh, attacked you said in the 1700s, correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Was actually a hyena, which explains the the lore behind the weaker leg, rear legs of of the werewolf. Um, the one thing that uh, would 
kind of differentiate between the the hyena or any any uh, dog cre- like creature, the wolf, a dog uh, wolf hybrid, and that's all of the different theories of what this creature is. Um, mm-hmm. Is the fact that in each instance, and again, we've said that it, it's very sketchy at best because everybody knew each other. Uh, that saw this creature was the fact that they saw this thing eating with its hands turned towards its mouth where a typical wolf or hyena or dog would not be able to do that. Um, Mm -hmm. So the one thing that you and I kind of talked about before we got started recording is that there's a lot of cryptozoologists out there that are saying that this is, seems more like a Bigfoot type mm-hmm. s- sighting because scientifically it the werewolf would not exist compared to the Bigfoot which like I told you when we were talking about it if you think of it from a traditional werewolf standpoint that's where I would think they were saying it's not scientifically able to be a werewolf from the werewolf lore that we we were talking about earlier Mm -hmm. but uh let's kind of go that route let's say this is supposedly a bigfoot um okay and for whatever reason something happened where because when you think of the bigfoot uh legends or Mm -hmm. sightings it's on it's upright it's standing upright almost like a human and um so let's say for example it got injured somehow, okay? okay? And the back legs were not as strong as they were before it was injured. So from a Bigfoot standpoint, it would almost have to become feral because it's injured. So it would become very mm-hmm. ferocious, very... I don't know if it would become bloodthirsty, but if it killed something, and again, it depends on what you think of as far as what the, the Bigfoot eat... Or big feet? Would that be plural for Bigfoot? I don't know. Big um, feet. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, it would it would become feral, so it would become more uh, aggressive. And in so doing, as well, you and I have talked about mini evolution, where their snout that is supposed to be more like an ape face would become a little elongated, so that it would get fangs to be more ferocious um Mm -hmm. that is the only way i could think of that it would be attributed to these particular sightings what do you think um i mean i i am against the whole belief that the werewolf would or could be a bigfoot um, just for the simple fact that many of the sightings of this creature have shown him or depicted him as eating meat of some sort, where as far as I know, and I could be wrong because I don't know a huge, large amount, not huge and large are like the same thing, but a large amount of uh, Bigfoot theories and stories, but I don't think that they really eat meat. I, I always thought that they were more uh, vegasaurs, if you will, vegasaurs as if they're dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> well, depending on I'm what you think all the, in the, loop. the Bigfoot really is, it could be a link to yeah. Who knows? So, but from what I understand, like the lore of the Bigfoot was that they are vegetarian creatures, and very much human-like uh, in everything that they do. Even their so-called nests were, in a way, almost human-like. Mm-hmm. So thinking that a creature that is naturally vegetarian would suddenly become a meat eater and eat roadkill on the side of the road or a dead deer or attack a deer and eat it. I mean, not that they don't. I don't know. I don't know much about Bigfoot and what they eat. You I've know? heard, I've heard that they're – and this is just from di- different people. Some people say that they are more uh, omnivorous like we are. Okay. Where they do eat rabbit or squirrel or small, usually like small rodents, nothing huge. Right. Um, right. 
but that just depends on sightings and the people that supposedly have had relationships with Bigfoot mm-hmm. and that sort of a thing. So that's that's where I'm coming from as far as that. I I, okay. ha- I honestly don't know either if they if this creep Bigfoot is real what they eat, but that's what I've heard. Right. Well, and the one thing though is, from what I understand. Bigfoot has never really been depicted as having claws, per se. Right. It's always, you know, if anything, they have nails like us or like gorillas, you know, have nails and so on and so forth. Where this Bray Road beast, had, there's, there's claims that it really does have claws and that there's evidence of it. The uh, a, a woman by the name of Dorstein Gibson was the first one to ever encounter the Bray Road beast right. in October thir- on October 31st of 1999. And she happened to be glancing away from the road when she felt her tire lift up off the ground and, like, she hit a bump. Well, she was concerned and she looked back to in her rear meal, mirror meal, <laughs> back in her rear view mirror to see this gigantic, heavy bodied creature, very balky creature. She says that it started running at her from about 50 feet away, and it sounded as if it had really heavy feet, and she tried to get out of there. She stepped on the gas. It jumped on the back of her car, but because her car was wet from rain, it slipped off. Well, she didn't bother to tell anybody right away, but the next day, she did tell her neighbor. And sure enough, when she looks at her car, what does she find? None other than a bunch of claw marks scratched into the paint. Mm. So, I mean, that in itself is very interesting. You could think it's a bear, but bears, they're not faster than a car. Like, even if you start moving, they're not going to jump on the car, and now they have huge claws. But I don't think that they're going to attack a car quite the same way as something that is just naturally uh, aggressive. Right. Unless the bear, for some reason, is trying to protect its young or something like that. But... I don't know, man. I mean, they're just... And most very, animals it, that we think of, too, are kind of skittish towards humans unless they feel threatened. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, if anything, I would I would say that if anything, it's not a point towards an actual animal as a bear. I think the bear would be the most likely possibility here, just based on the size of claws, teeth, eating meat, et cetera, et cetera, chasing after... I could see a bear up, definitely. Big foot, though. Well, <laughs> well and, and folks, I mean, you can take our opinion with a grain of salt if you like, but both Eric and I do not ble- believe Bigfoot exists. As far as a physical creature, if it's right. something manifesting as, as what these things look like, maybe. Um, right. But... Same thing with werewolves. I don't necessarily foresee a human turning into a huge wolf. If anything, I could see this creature being something that we just have never discovered. But Mm -hmm. just like with the Bigfoot, why wouldn't we have discovered bones or a dead body, something like that? Uh, Right. But it has kind of caught on to entertainment and media as well uh, somebody had asked me uh, Heidi had asked me if we were going to have uh, Linda Godfrey on and she's wrote a book about this which this is the second time we've talked about Linda Godfrey <laughs> in the past couple I, of weeks I know. and so I, I'm, I'm starting to think we should have her on but um, she had she had actually been the one reporting on this creature in the 90s she had mm-hmm. gotten all the accounts and everything um, but there's also been a movie made. Uh, mm-hmm. If you guys are familiar with the lost tapes from Animal Planet, apparently there was a Bray Road Beast lost tape made. Um, and the movie, as far well, I haven't actually seen it, but from pictures and stuff, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. <laughs> Though I should probably not say that until I actually watch it, but hey, I, I learned all about branding. If you don't <laughs> brand correctly, people aren't going to watch. They yeah. branded poorly. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah, but uh, it it has come into 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 entertainment a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. 
Um, for those who who might be wondering, because Linda Godfrey is, is someone that. She, I mean, she, her books is something that we've always been interested in, and yeah. we've talked talked about her so many times. But the name of the book that she wrote is "The Beast of Bray Road: Trailing uh, Wisconsin's a Werewolf." If you're interested, anybody out there who's interested in checking out that book, yeah, yeah, it, and she, I, I believe, if I remember correctly, she always. Uh, writes back anybody who's asking her questions or whatever so if you have questions about it definitely get in touch with her even mm-hmm. if it's the little bit of information that we're giving you guys in this hour broadcast um, it's it's one of those things that even breaking it down it's hard to say like um, so let's let's come from from the Christian perspective on this um, and because you have heard an instance where there was someone who was being demonically oppressed or possessed and it was like a werewolf creature or a Bigfoot creature mm-hmm. or maybe there was two separate instances I can't remember um, do you think that something like that might have happened when when the first girl came across this thing you know, I would – so from a Christian standpoint, of course, I would naturally want to say, yes, that's a very good possibility. However, this evidence doesn't clearly support that theory and the fact that there were claw marks on the back of the – there in the first place. Um, even if it were to show up, it's very – Big claw marks into the paint, you know, painted metal uh, that would be visible. Now, yes, there's been stories about people who have been, you know, left with scratches, three scratches on them from demonic attacks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. A, a couple of scratches on someone's arm is completely different from large scratches on a metal surface that show up. So I think that whatever, if indeed what she saw was real, and if indeed this entire story is true in any way whatsoever, the fact is that there was something physical on the road that attacked her car and the scratch marks. Whether or not that was a werewolf, I don't know. There's not enough evidence to me to say that it, that there was. But I think if her story is true, there was something of some mass and physical form that attacked her. Okay. Now, do you do you think that, like with like I was saying with. Uh, Shamanic magic or uh, devil worship, where people are, are like wanting to become these creatures or a skinwalker. Do you think that is is a possibility as far as from the demon standpoint? Like, was this person possibly doing satanic magic and trying to become this creature, and in a sense, <clears throat> kind of did? Um. I mean, there's always that possibility, but again, the one thing that throws this entire story or that idea away from the story is the fact that there were numerous reports of the beast from numerous people. Now, whether or not they knew each other or didn't know each other it, at this moment is, doesn't matter. We're just, it just doesn't matter. So if there are numerous sightings coming from different people, then either they would all have to be included into this uh, demonic orgy, if you will. <laughs> so pardon the disturbing language there. But, you know, if they're participating in some kind of magical rituals, they would have all had to participate and, you know, either had visions of some sort or they themselves would have been possessed in some way or at least influenced to become like the creature. Now, basically... Uh, you know what I'm trying to say here is if this person was indeed a werewolf herself or to say that she was one would also have to say that these other encounters or the people who've also encountered such a thing also had to be a werewolf uh, or they've all seen the sim- the same thing which is just a separate entity altogether some creature out in the woods around the Bray Road area uh, however 
Now, it doesn't necessarily, necessarily have to be spiritual. There is a condition, a mental condition known as lycanthropy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a disease. And basically, when a person is struck with lycanthropy, if you will, I, I use this, the word struck just because I can't think of anything else at the moment. But That sounds good, struck. <laughs> okay. So when they have that condition, they're usually very irritable, they're very aggressive, and they're extremely dangerous. So having a person like that in society is a very bad thing. Um, and these people just simply believe that they're an animal. Now, I know way back when, when Justin and I had night stalkers, we had heard about a couple of people who claimed to be lycanthropes. Mm-hmm. Uh, they themselves believed to be werewolves, uh, which is very interesting in and of itself because now you're talking like, okay, do we have somebody like this on or, you know, just, just out of curiosity, but if we do, are we feeding into their disorder? Yeah. Because it's not natural to think that you're an animal, especially if you're human. We cannot change physically. Mentally, we can. But like I said, like in regards to the evidence, I don't think, or I think in regards to the evidence, if there was some kind of magical incantations going on in which to become a werewolf, they wouldn't have been able to do, like put the marks and stuff on the car unless they were using tools which i don't know in mentally unstable you might use a tool thinking it's your claws it depends i don't know you know hallucinations you could see a number of things so i guess there's a possibility that but i don't think that these people were you know calling upon demonic forces to change them into demons but if they were i think demons instead would they themselves become the werewolf and show themselves to them mm. um, in a spiritual form, of course. I mean, right. there was a story that Justin had mentioned earlier where a guy who lived in a house where a lot of satanic rituals had happened uh, witnessed a werewolf walking around in his backyard within the trees. And he saw this on numerous occasions. Never came to the house. All Never went back any further. Always stayed within the same area. Uh, but it was very clear that it was most likely a spiritual thing because it would be there one moment and the next moment gone. The werewolves don't just pick up and poof, disappear. You know, they have to run off if they're physical form. So I, answered the, I think I answered the question. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I mean, that, that other than a huge dog like creature, the only other thing I could think of is something manifesting, but like you said, the evidence points to something physical. Or they didn't just like drive through it or anything. They truly drove over something. Right. If it's just not mass hysteria altogether. Could be. I mean, the reports say that after the 1991 incident, a bunch of other reports started coming out all of a sudden. But they were from previous years. 89. Right. right. 88. Um, which is interesting. So it's like, did those people who came out later really have an incident? Or were they just playing along like, oh... I saw a shadow on the side of the road. It must have been the same thing. You know, we don't we don't know. I mean, there's there's just not enough evidence to support one or the other. So right. Well, the one of one other piece of evidence which we actually forgot to to bring up too is the glowing yellow eyes. Yes. And that's that's the only thing why I would think of something demonic or uh, spiritual interdimensional creature whatever you you want to call it um, because the only way a an animal would get that yellow uh, tint is if light is hitting their eyes like flashing the, the eye flash um, well <clears throat> yes and no now I have a couple of theories here um I never noticed it on my on my own because I've never seen. I've seen coyote, but it was either during the day or as well as in a my bedroom looking out the window. You know, I see a massive coyote, but it was a profile view of the the coyote. Oh, okay, but from what I understand, the eyes of coyote do glow with or without light, uh, and often okay. animals will see the coyote in a distance based on the reflection of their eyes. Now, why they glow, I don't know. Without light. On the other hand, there are a number of light sources around the city. Now, this is kind of a backwoods area you know, where this where this encounter happened on Bray Road. So your only thought is, okay, she didn't have 
it's facing the creature, but it was nighttime, which means she has tail lights. Whether she's hitting on the brake or not, those lights are oh, still shining true. in the back. Yeah. So it could reflect it off the eyes that way. Another possibility is that the moon was out. If the moon was out, it's plenty enough light, especially if it's big enough, to have cause a reflection on the creature's eyes. Um, when you look at even infrared, we, you and I have worked with infrared on numerous occasions especially when we used to do uh, investigations. Mm. Infrared isn't a very powerful light. It's relatively dim. But when you look at uh, trap cameras or you look at infrared photos of cats and other animals, we always notice that it leaves glow in their eye, Mm. even though the light isn't very powerful. So animals need a very, very, very small amount of light for their eyes to reflect. Okay. <clears throat> All right, folks, this looks like a great time to take our second and last break of the evening. You are listening to Bird Truth Radio, and we will be right back after Justin's Paranormal Headlines. And now, and now Paratruth, Paratruth, Paratruth Radio's Paranormal, Paranormal Headlines. 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 How's it going, para fans? Justin here with your Paranormal Headlines. And this headline is from usatoday.com. 13th severed foot washes up on Canadian shore. A severed foot, still inside of a running shoe, is the 13th dismembered foot to wash up on the shore of British Columbia since 2007, according to the British Columbia Coroner's Service. The shoe was sold in North America in March 2013, leading authorities to believe the person died between 2013 and December of last year. Preliminary examination suggests that the foot disarticulated naturally from the rest of the body, a result of prolonged immersion in water, the coroner's office said in a statement. The foot was found on February 7th by a family walking along Botanical Beach on Vancouver Island, according to Canadian Broadcasting Corporation News. Charlotte Stevens told CBC that her husband picked up the shoe and didn't notice anything unusual at first. He brought it out onto the beach, and we had a look at it for about five minutes, and we thought, it almost looks like there is an actual foot bone in it, Stevens told CBC. The coroner's office is working with local authorities to identify the person and try to determine the cause of death. The dismembered feet have sparkled numerous theories about what could be causing the grisly discoveries. In 2008, a year after several feet washed ashore, the Toronto Star reported that speculation ranges from natural disasters such as the tsunami of 2004 to the work of drug dealers, serial killers, and human traffickers. To date, authorities have been able to identify 10 of the 13 feet that have washed ashore in the last nine years. In none of the cases was any foul play involved, the coroner's office said. And this has been Justin with your Paranormal Headlines. This was a segment of Parachute Radio's Paranormal Headlines. What's up, folks? Welcome back to Parachute Radio. My name is Eric. And I'm Justin. And we are part, and of course, the owners of the Parachute Radio Network, which you are currently listening to. <sighs> you know, we've been talking about the Bray Road Beast. Yeah. The Bray Road Beast, or the Beast of Bray Road, depending on how you like to say it. Mm-hmm. Uh, very interesting discussion. A lot of information uh, that both... That's new, actually, to both Justin and I. There's things he's saying that I didn't hear before, and there's things I'm saying that he didn't hear before. And I'm sure we're both saying things that you guys have never heard before. Which um, kind of goes along the lines of when you said, uh, it was several weeks ago, that uh, you know we usually don't talk before the show because, you know, how are we supposed to be surprised about what right. information each other came I'm, across? I want to learn stuff the same time everybody else learns stuff. Mm. It's, it's no fun if you. It, to me, it's not as fun going into one of these shows knowing everything that we're going to say. No, yeah. it's just that's not radio. <laughs> so <clears throat> there's no script here, folks. Yeah. 
So, in your opinion, uh, what what's your thoughts on what this thing this thing really is? Um. Oh. Hmm. Hurry! It's almost over. I'm thinking that it's just a mistaken identity. It okay. could be a bear. Well, and that, we do, we know well unless it escaped from the zoo, it's it couldn't be a hyena per se. <laughs> right? No, I mean you never know. Well, I mean, yeah, people get exotic animals here all the time. Don't right. know how, but uh, you know, I, I think it, if the story is true and what all these people are saying, I think it could be a bear of some sort that's just protecting its territory. Either that or an extremely large wolf, which. Is a very good possibility. Now they don't have claws that are per se huge, mm-hmm. but they do have big enough claws to leave scratch marks. Uh, I don't remember how big the scratches are on this woman's car that she claims to have been on there. For all we know, they're you know teeny tiny. Mm-hmm. But if it's a heavy enough animal, it doesn't matter. It's going to leave marks, right? Right. But I don't know. What about you? you well. Think? The first thing I think is is possibly uh, misidentification. Um, the other theory that I came across, which is highly plausible, is a some type of hybrid, where okay. uh, it was a wolf dog hybrid. Which, if you got a big enough dog mixed with a wolf, it it would be. I won't. I don't think it would be seventeen seventeen feet. Seven feet tall when it's standing up but like if you think of great danes they're pretty huge when they're up on their their hind legs Mm -hmm. so or and i don't know if this is even possible but it was also mentioned uh wolf hybrid or dog hybrid with a hyena Mm. and that would explain the the weaker legs in the back because if you think of a typical wolf they don't have weak hind legs. They're right. just like any other canine. Where the hyena, it does have those smaller, weaker legs in the back. Right. So. Well, and, and here's here's another possibility. Could it have been... Now, the story says that the creature had pointy ears. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing that kind of throws me away from the idea that it's a uh, bear. Also, the fact that she can see the muscular muscularity in the arms, you know. Right. Um, she said you could tell it was muscular. Bear, their fur is so thick, and they just naturally have a certain amount of fat on them that you don't see the muscle underneath. Right. Yeah, you don't see the muscle. Um, sure, yeah. Now, the one thing that could be, because we haven't heard anything since 91. Right. Which means maybe the creature died. And if that's the case, what if it was a bear that had mange? Right. Now, it would have lost a lot of the fur. It would have showed much more of its flesh. Uh, it probably would have lost quite a bit of weight, and therefore you'd seen more muscle. Um, you know, the, the gums and stuff, they have teeth. You would have been able to see the teeth and the claws better, so on and so forth, because of the lack of fur. Um, and, of course, bears, they are capable of turning their paws upside down and using them to eat things and stuff like that. Um I even saw a bear wave once. It's pretty cool and weird. <laughs> but, um, and as for the back end being weak, I think there's there's uh, three possibilities here. Either A, it was weak from the mange. Mm-hmm. Which could, that could be a possibility, yeah. Could be a possibility. Two, it was a birth defect. Mm-hmm. It, it happened, it managed to live as long as it did, but it had a birth defect and its back end was weak. Or C, Perhaps the animal was hit by a car, right? And it, the back end is broken and never truly healed, and so it was just naturally smaller. For all we know, the person who hit the animal in the first place could have broken his back legs, and therefore just seemed to be smaller, even though. But the truth is, it maybe just couldn't stand properly, right? right. Um, and, and yeah, I understand it moved fast to uh, jump on the car, but if you ever see a deer get hit by a car, yeah. They keep running sometimes, and they don't or stop. get, get up fast. after being... They get up, yeah. you know, and you can tell that the legs are broken, and yet they're still, like, gone. Yeah. Adrenaline kicks in. So, you know, I, I think those are all very probable, uh, uh, you know, well, possibilities there. For, for the main standpoint, if it had either a birth defect or had been in... Well, if it had a birth defect, um, mange is a... Uh, um, 
bacterial infection. So mm-hmm. if it couldn't walk properly, it could have easily gotten mange easier compared to the average bear, if you will, not a yogi reference. Uh, (laughs) Uh, um, But uh, as far as like if it had been injured, it would have had to have that mange first in order for her to see what what we were seeing. Um, Right. Uh, And uh, the one thing... Well, uh, actually, where where are you going with this next? I'm just trying to think um, as far as... I was trying to think, do bears do that? But I don't know if they do it completely like we do or just to the side where... Like, I'm not saying they scoop up water and drink it. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I rec- from, like, an eating standpoint, it could right. almost look like, yeah, they were, it, they were, were doing it, that if it was... Yeah, where it looks like. I'm not saying that, you know, they necessarily do it on purpose, but it's just, like, helps... Like, I see cats do it. I mean, right. Bella, she'll, like, scoop her hands under the hold, paws under the hold stuff. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I feel like I remember seeing, like like a bear trying to swipe like at like a cub or something but like lifting its paw upward oh i I mean it could just been a you know mistaken type of identity they thought it was eating food but maybe it was trying to get something and or if it was eating food if you're far away and depending on the lighting outside it would almost look like the the paws are turned up when really it's just doing this trying to eat Um, right so i i think I, I think there's a number of possibilities. I, you know, I'm not saying that everything I said is the possibility, but I'm saying that there's options here. You know, right. it's just, just help. It's just a way to help everyone broaden their mind a little bit and not focus on the fact that, or the idea that it was indeed a werewolf. It could have been a number of different things. Um, so details, you know, we're not specific here, folks. I mean, I, if I'm wrong and bears can't turn their paws like that. <laughs> Don't shoot me for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, but, I think the biggest thing that throws a wrench in the loop for this creature is the fact that all of the witnesses are connected. Mm-hmm. And say, for example, this woman that the first woman, I forget her name now. Um, uh, I'll have it for you in just a moment here. Doris, Doris Dean Gibson. Okay. If, if Doris Dean had hit something and say, for example, she she hit a bear or a small cub and it got up and got really pissed and it started charging at her. I don't foresee the bear jumping onto the car and then slipping off, but it is a possibility. So say she did, she had this particular coincidence and then, like you're, you said... Everybody, it's like telephone. Everybody's talking about it, and then, just like we've said numerous times, fear kicks in. They see something out of the corner of their eye, or they see something that's kind of off. So then, it yep. automatically becomes this werewolf, wolf man, dog man creature that the first right. woman had kind of described. Absolutely. Uh, so, I, I truly, I think that from that standpoint, it could either be misidentification or just fear taking hold of people um, and with the the mange thing if if it was a bear that had mange and it was misidentified those claws would be much more predominant as well it's mm-hmm. not hidden under the fur right so yeah that I think that's where I stand on it yeah well I, I know the one thing we well, we don't now we used to do this all the time and we kind of got away from it and mostly because many of the topics that we've talked about lately didn't really relate um but in this case it kind of relates uh i'm, I'm going to jump into the bible here for a moment because this kind of gives us a similar idea based on the werewolf but not so much the physical creature or uh lore of the werewolf but more so the lycanthropy mindset oh, okay. uh in the sense that a human can have the mind of a creature and even look like one. Now, this story comes from the book of Daniel, specifically chapter four. Uh, I'm probably I'm going to start it at verse 32, and it's basically 32, 33, and uh, that's it. 32 and 33. So, Daniel chapter four, verse 32 and 33. This is what it says. This is Daniel speaking. By the way, in, just give a little bit of context. God told Daniel to go to Nebuchadnezzar and tell him this. 
and you will be driven away from mankind, and your dwelling place will be with the beasts of the field. You will be giving grass to eat like cattle. Seven periods of time will pass over you until you recognize that the Most High is ruler over the realm of mankind, and bestow it on whoever, on whoever he wishes. Verse 33. Immediately, the word concerning Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled, and he was driven away from mankind and began eating grass to cattle. And his body was drenched with the dew of heaven until his hair had grown like an eagle's feathers and his nails became claws like a bird. In many of the contents, it says nails like the claws of a bird and so on and so forth. But you kind of get this weird disorder all of a sudden. You know, something that God... Now, now this is God's doing for whatever reason. And it was a way to show him the power that God has. But it kind of relates to this whole lycanthropy thing. Now, lycanthropy is people who, again, think they're a werewolf. They act like one, very aggressive. But mind you, they also eat things like a werewolf would eat. They tend to like raw meat, not necessarily cooked. Uh, they like the taste of blood, so on and so forth. Here, obviously, he's not eating meat. He's eating vegetation, but he's still very much animal-like. And how many people just go out into the grass and start eating grass and then stay there mm. for seven, whatever, however long seven periods is. Um, and his hair grows like feathers. I mean, does that mean that it liter- his hair literally turned into feathers or is it just they got long enough to feather out like a mm. feather, you know, uh, and then the nails like claws of a bird. Did they sharpen? don't know were they just long like a claw like uh the claws of a bird we don't know but you're seeing this animalistic you know thing going on here in nebuchadnezzar's mind uh, and it's causing him physically to change in a way mm. like a werewolf but you know we're, we're seeing some interesting connections here yeah and I had kind of heard that before on on the fourth watch. Justin had brought it up about Nebuchadnezzar possibly being a a werewolf in the Bible. Um, so yeah, it, I mean, so it kind of correlates to to that as well. I mean, you don't necessarily think that when you read the Bible <laughs> that mm-hmm. it, it's a werewolf reference, but huh. it, most I could, people don't. Yeah, but I could see I could see that correlation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean. It, so I'm not saying that Nebuchadnezzar here became a werewolf. It's very clear that he didn't. But he does have some kind of animalistic um, change. Yeah, change of some sort. Again, physically speaking, I don't think he literally has claws or literally has feathers. I think it's just an expression. Or uh, God could have made him think he was becoming that's, that. That, that. That's a very, very good possibility. So... All right, folks, that is the Bray Road Beast. Uh, very interesting. Wait. Oh, wait. What, what? Yes, it's very interesting. There's no, no, there's no, more, no more talk about, you know, the Bray Road, but there is something that you and I have to do here. Uh-oh. Yep. It's, it's a wolf, man. Werewolf. <laughs> we got we to gotta do the howl. Gotta. Gotta. Gotta, gotta. We gotta, gotta, man. You gotta. Uh, I'm gonna. You can't talk about werewolves and not howl yourself. <laughs> you can play little buttons here and there, but it's not as fun unless you actually become do the it. werewolf. Yeah, I mean, I do it almost on a daily basis. <laughs> so, so it's not that doesn't surprise me. It's it's not weird. <laughs> 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 the funny story, real quick. Yesterday, at, during school, I was asked what is one of the weirdest things I've done or that I collect and so on and so forth. So, you know, naturally, I collect um, Hot Wheels cars. They're like, even to this day? Yeah. That's cool. That's great. So what's something more weird that, you know, and it's just going around in circles. So I mentioned that I eat dog biscuits. Yes, people. It's good. It's high in fiber. The taste depends on what brand to get. I personally like milk bone. It's up to you. Um, so don't knock which, it till you try it. I told Shelly about that, and she has a whole new respect for you as far as a meat eater because you eat dog bones. Because it has a bunch <laughs> of everything mashed in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I was about to mention, uh, I howl. 
uh, sometimes. <laughs> but then I was like, you know what? That's one so thing. So it's not a, like a, you bang your toe and you're like, oh, no, 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 no. This is like, <laughs> this is like sitting on my couch and the show is going and commercial happens and, I, and then I go, and howl. Um, oh come on! You talk about we, the, should, we have to howl, and you I, just, just don't do it. No, yeah, well, I can't do it now. I gotta gotta save it and build oh, it up for you like the gotta boom, save it you know? a moment. Got it. Yeah, okay. you know that's what that's how that's how it's done. Uh, but yeah, driving home, you know, in the dark, especially a howl on occasions. Full moons. That's a number. That's always you do not pass a howl on the full moon, and no matter what. You never skip Halloween without howling with at least once at night. Can't be during the day. It's got to be at night. Always at night. Um, and that's me. And then you can do it any time of the day. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I don't suffer from any type of lycanthropy. I think Justin can make an argument for that at the moment. <laughs> My argument is I grew up with three Siberian Huskies. I learned from them naturally. I howl because they always howl. Um, so you did develop lycanthropy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's husky thropy. Oh, well, yeah. There's a, a difference. Very close similarity between the two. Well, I'm not denying that. <laughs> Just we got to get the terms correct. <laughs> and I do believe they, they thought Thunder might have possibly been a hybrid. He was a big husky. Yeah. So very much bigger than he should have been. That's for sure. So, uh, yeah, well, I guess let's howl. <laughs> you're, you're scared to do it. He's like, oh, it, there's, I could try to change the subject and hopefully get past I it. I can't redirect this one. I just know I'm going to no. lose. So. Even if he did, I just start howling in the middle of him talking. And then <laughs> say, I'm going to keep going until you howl. All right. <laughs> On the count of three. One, two, three. Ow! Ow! You know, the people below me right now are like, what the freaking? <laughs> I'm sure they say that every time you do it. So, <laughs> all right, sure. folks, the Bray Road Beast. A win for us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, got a lot of great stuff coming up for you guys. Uh, I do realize that I said last week uh, we were going to have Gilbert out Gil Broussard on about Planet 7X. I am working on getting him on. There was a little bit of miscommunication. So uh, we do want to get him on and and talk about Planet 7X. Yeah, so we are planning on getting him on. It was just a miscommunication there. So, uh... <laughs> Those of you who don't watch the YouTube things really should consider it on occasion. Because <laughs> the face he just made was most frightening of any cryptid ever discussed on this show. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, it's keep staying tuned to Pear Truth Radio Network. Uh, if you guys missed it on Wednesday, Jerry did have another show on Tiger Old for God Radio. And I believe it was talking about uh, human trafficking. Um, I forget the guest's name, but uh, she is doing great here on PTRN, and I do applaud her for continuing to improve. She's doing an awesome show. So uh, until next week, guys, where you will find us, same time, same channel. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. Peace. If you enjoyed this episode of Parachute Radio and you would like to listen to it again or are interested in listening to any of our past episodes, then you can listen to them on HD at our website, parachutheradio.com. And you can also find us at Stitcher, Blueberry, TuneIn, iTunes, Spreaker, and YouTube. And of course, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for brand new updates of our show every day.